Your committee is also looking at the important issue of leverage for banks. It gets a little complicated, but it's, it's, it's actually critical to preventing the kind of crisis that we saw uh, starting in 2008. So the example cited in the pre, uh, press release by your committee uh, compared Citigroup's tier one capital of $141 billion versus its equity of just $98 billion. So it's a matter of choosing which one of those numbers you plug into the formula to judge how sound, liquid, how much leverage this bank has. Can you explain that? Because it's really critical, a little complicated, but very worth understanding. Uh, yes, it's one of the problems we have with the multiple regulatory definitions of capital. Uh, both regulators and banks tend to use the definition that makes them look best. But in fact, if you're worried about uh, a bank's ability to absorb loss without being reorganized or without receiving assistance from taxpayers, you're really only interested in a subset of the things that regulators used to call capital. For example, sub-debt won't work because um, you have to go through a bankruptcy proceeding before that becomes available. Um, a lot of preferred debt won't work. It's really equity that is the primary uh, shock absorber so that if a bank takes a hit on the asset side, the equity holders have nothing to do but say, ouch, and you can keep the bank going. But so if that's, it happens, that's, the, that's your foundation. The equity is yeah. the foundation of the bank. And that, in fact, was the really important innovation in Basel III. Uh, in Basel III, they made a very clear distinction between capital that was a, able to uh, absorb loss and permit the institution to keep going, that is, going concern capital, and what they called gone concern capital, <laughs> That's or good. capital you could only use after the institution went through some sort of resolution or bankruptcy process. Now, it turns out they were simply following the market, because during the crisis, it was in almost every case true that whenever an institution failed, its regulator was, was caught in the really awkward position of having a press conference where they had to explain why the institution failed despite the fact they had a risk-adjusted capital ratio that was far above the peers. Their numbers looked good. <laughs> the numbers looked terrific because they were manipulated. They invited manipulation. Um, one of the best examples of this is that Citibank had, I think, one of the highest tier one risk-adjusted ratios of all the banks at a time when its share price was trading at about a dollar a share. So that the, the clear distinction between what the regulators somehow thought and what the market believed was just completely uh, stark, and obviously it, it, it undermined all credibility in the regulatory approach. So where is that today? Is, that, it's, is it being fixed? Is it not being fixed? Is, it, being is it being fudged? Well, it's being fixed, but um, it's being taken up reluctantly. The U.S. has long had a leverage ratio. Um, the FDIC, uh, who views itself as paying the bill when things go wrong, has always insisted on it. And uh, it led to a long delay in the U.S. acceptance of Basel II. Um, at, during the crisis, however, a number of other countries became persuaded that we were right that leverage was a much better indicator of a bank's ability to absorb loss than the very elaborate and very um, obscure risk-adjusted ratios. Uh, and so the new version, Basel III, does include a leverage ratio of 3%. They have a very clear methodology of, of comparing uh, basically uh, shareholder net worth to assets that are augmented to reflect um, off-balance sheet positions. Uh, that is not yet, however, baked into the hard number test because a number of Europeans had no hope of meeting it. Actually, the British just reported it. They're the first country to have reported their uh, bank's information that way uh, earlier this week. And of the five leading banks, um, one didn't make it, one that we would have thought was the best, <laughs> and two others were just at the line. We don't actually know how it would play for U.S. banks because it's a little different than we uh, actually compute it. But it's by using a different ratio, as the Fed did in its recent stress test, you can make a, a big difference in how banks look. You can make a big difference in the numerator, as you indicated, by including things other than common equity. So you can get to tier one by adding a lot of things that are kind of like equity, but not really. 
And that's why you had uh, those two examples, Morgan Stanley and Citi, were taken because the differences are very large in that So case. this is the fudge factor. That's the a fudge, fudge factor, factor in the numerator. But mm -hmm. it's also f possible to fudge the denominator. And that's even more worrisome because during the first quarter, we saw a lot of improvements in these ratios. But when you looked behind the numbers, it was because banks had so-called refined their risk models, which is to say the risk models had been adjusted to give them lower risk weights. Um, and we've also had a recent study by the Basel Committee that shows that if you give the same portfolio to several different leading banks, you're going to end up with very, very different risk numbers. And so uh, these things are really not reliable because they are so subject to manipulation. Moreover, they make it impossible for anyone on the outside to compare one bank to another because you have to know the details of all of its models, which in some cases can be as many as 200 million calculations, uh, which is just, you know, impossible. Um, and so uh, we were concerned that the Fed was going to lose an opportunity, as it turns out they did, to actually use the new clean leverage ratio as the hallmark of the strength of U.S. banks in reporting the results of the simulation tests. So on the road to making the global financial system more safe and to preventing the kind of meltdown that we had five or six years ago, um, we haven't gotten very far. Uh, not nearly as far as we should be, but mm -hmm. um, at least putting leverage into the regulatory mix was an improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, now if they would fortify it and uh, actually use it more frequently as a reporting and comparison device, I think uh, we would have made an advance. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.